Hi guys, Adam again. Good job so far. Um, I'm just gonna remove this. In the last video, we went over X lookup and we went over index match with one criteria and multiple criteria. And in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna refer to our planning and start kind of building out these KPIs that, that we have here. We're gonna worry about the graphs later. And, and to be honest, this is a point uh, where you know, based on the visualization uh, with our team dashboard, it made sense to display a list of people in a table and color code things in a, in a way that was done in, in a tabular format with numbers. We could create this dashboard almost entirely from graphs, which we may end up doing. And if that's the case, it may be best to actually do calculations in a separate sheet. Right now, I'm going to create a separate sheet that I'm just going to call reference. And, and, and I generally do this with everything anyways. This is where we create things like lists for drop down menus, um, athlete names, and various calculations that don't necessarily need to be on the dashboard page, but we can refer to. With all that being said, I'm going to do everything for now on this page. Um, and then maybe at the end of the video or at the end of this series, we'll, we'll do it again using more graphs. Like for example, in our planning, instead of having KPIs that are just numbers, we could have a gauge of sorts or um, a, a wheel that fill that fills up um, as they get closer to their maximum or, or the team maximum or whatever you want. So, with all that being said, let's just start getting some of this data uh, on this page, and I'm just going to start typing some things in. Right, we got readiness KPIs. We have eight of them. And I consider SRPE and readiness score as readiness KPIs. So let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe we don't care that much about duration. Or maybe we do. Let's make it nine. Let's make it nine. So I'm going to copy all these headers just so I remember what they are. And we don't need participation in training. Ah, why not? This actually might be participation in training might be by the injury status thing. And we can do we can do something there. I'll worry about that in the next video. But for stress, so again, we're looking at a date, a name, and the comparison group doesn't really matter until we start doing team or cohort or this person's annual averages. So this is relatively simple for us, especially if we've gone through prior videos, where we're just going to do an average ifs formula. So I'm going to keep type in equal average ifs. What do I want the average of? I'm going to refer to my table, TBL underscore daily. I want the average open square bracket. I want the average of the stress. But if I just do that, then I'm going to get the average stress for every single person for every day. Um, what I want is I want the average stress when PBL underscore daily name, when the name of the person is this fella right here. And I'm going to lock that cell in. And table daily. When the date is whatever this date is right here. I'm going to close that. I'm going to do equals before all this, if error. If there's an error with this whole formula, comma, let's just have it be blank. Click enter. I have a stress value of six. I'm going to, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this value to these other, to these other cells. Um, but one thing that I might... One thing that I'll show you, actually, let me do this. This is a good teaching point anyway. So I'm going to copy and paste this down. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start locking columns, kind of like we locked the cell, or we locked the, sorry, I'm going to start locking table columns. Here we locked the column and we locked the row for this cell. We're going to do a similar thing with the columns in our table. Now let's say that we had a bunch of items in our table and we wanted the same formula to apply to a bunch of them, except the only thing that we wanted to change is 
We wanted to change from stress to sleep quality to energy to muscle soreness, et cetera. But we still wanted the names and the dates, um, that criteria to remain the same. Well, if I drag this across right now, I get a lot of blanks. That's because there are errors. And when I click into the cell, what happens in the table is it drags each of these table references over one. So now instead of stress, it's a sleep quality. So instead of stress, it becomes sleep quality. Instead of name in our table, it becomes injury status. So instead of name, it becomes injury status. And you kind of see what's going on here. It goes over one every time. Now to lock these things in, what we can do is with the things that we want to lock in is we can put another square bracket, open square bracket before the item that we want to lock in, do a colon, and then another open square bracket and the name of the column again and double square bracket on the end. So now we're telling Excel we want the average of stress when the, the name in the table is equal to B1. And when we drag this over, we don't want this name column to change. And I'm going to do the same thing with date. So open square bracket, colon, date, double square bracket, and I'm going to click enter. So again, if I drag this one across without the locking, we're going to get a bunch of blanks. If I drag this one across, I'm going to get a bunch of values. And notice this is the participation training value that I removed the header from. So the name cell stays locked, the date cell stays locked, the readiness or the first column changes. Now the other way to do this is I'm going to take this stress value, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it to sleep quality and just change what we're looking at here oops, to sleep quality. With the other criteria remaining the same, click enter, copy that, paste it over. So sleep quality, we want energy. The energy, we want muscle soreness, and et cetera, right? So you, you see that these two things are accomplishing the same task. Depending on how many data items you have, you might choose one method or the other. If you only have two, you might just want to copy and paste and change it because that's quicker. So I'm just going to delete this row because I don't need it anymore. And now what we have is we have the stress, sleep quality, energy, muscle soreness, confidence, RP, duration, SRP, and readiness score for this person on this date. And we can quickly check this by, I'm going to change this to Donald Duck. If I do this, when I click enter, we should see the entire thing change, including these numbers. And we do. And if I change this to a different date, perhaps 10-28-2017. Again, the numbers change again. So we kind of have a working dynamic, I guess, dashboard or data set so far. And that's great. Now, we're going to have to start getting into the comparisons. And this is essentially the same thing that we just did, believe it or not. We could do the same thing that we just did, except we need to add a little bit more to it, uh, some other criteria. It's not complex as it seems, but as we go through this, you're going to be, it may seem complex at first. So we have a couple way of do, a couple different ways of doing this. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to start using the reference sheet now. For comparison, I'm going to create a list that says comparison list. All right, I'm just going to highlight this in a different color, like a gray or something. Bold it, and I'm going to say self, and I'm going to say team. I'm going to say position. Okay. And I'm about to show you two different ways that, that this could work. So for comparison, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this formula and paste it down. Why not? I'm going to remove the if error because I like putting it on at the end so, so it's not as confusing. So I'm going to click enter. So now we have equals, the, the formula works, there's just no... Um, there's nothing that, that will be modified if, if there's an error. 
And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go if equals if whatever is in this cell, and I'm going to lock it in because I want it to stay the same, equals, and I'm going to do a quote self, comma, I want the average of stress when the name is equal to this name, but I don't care about the date anymore because I want their average of, of all time. But maybe I want it when stress, just to be safe, I'm going to change this to, to, to stress and I don't want it to be locked. Table daily stress is not equal to blank. I'm just going to close this off. And I always do this. You have to put parentheses around those. So it's giving me false because if I2 is self, then we want to average this stuff. But if not, then who knows? And it's just saying it's false because that's not true. If I type in self here, now, we have the this person's average stress value for everything in that daily monitoring data set. That's one way to do it. We're not going to do it this way because, in my opinion, this is a better way to do it when we make this into a drop-down menu at a, at a certain point. I'm going to say instead of if I2 equals self, I'm going to say if I2 equals this. I'm going to lock that in, and I'm going to click Enter. What you're going to notice is it does the exact same thing, because what I typed in here is this. But if this were a drop-down menu and I were selecting from these items, it would make sense in my visualization that I am looking at the item that is part of the drop-down list. Not sure if that makes sense, but it will when we get to drop-down list. So, we have this versus a self. Great. We're not done with this formula yet because we need to accommodate for the other, the other things. So if that's true, if I2 is equal to the reference A2, which is self, then we want the average, we want the average of that person's stress for all time. If that's not true, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. When I say if that's not true, I'm saying after this comma, that's what it signifies. If I2 equals reference, not A2 now, but A3, which I believe is team, then we want the average stress, when it, but we don't care about name anymore because we're getting it for everybody on the team. I'm trusting blank. And now I'm just going to kind of close this off. I'm going to remove the parentheses and just close this off. Again, we're taking breaks, okay? So now we say, so if this is self, then we want the average of this person's stress. If it says team, let me just check. Oop, what is going on? Let's just check. Team is next. So if it's team, or sorry, team is reference A3. So if it's team, then we want the average stress. Of, of all people. Now, if I change this to team, you see this value change. But we don't want, at least the way that I'm thinking about how I want this to work. So if I'm comparing someone to themselves, yeah, I'm comparing them to themselves of all time if this dashboard is based around a specific date. But if I'm comparing them to the team, I probably want to compare them to the team average for that day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this comma, table daily name, name, B1. It's just, just for organizational purposes, um, but you can, you can easily just type it in here. So I'm going to say average ifs, table daily stress, and I'm going to paste this in, make sure there aren't two commas. Ironic because I just removed it. But instead of name to name, I want this to be date. Date. And instead of B1, I want this to be whatever that I can't see the date cell because it's in my way. I think it's I. Yeah, but I can see now that it's highlighted in purple, I1. If I click enter, 
Now this number signifies the team average for this date. So now I'm comparing this person's value to the team average for this date. And we're not done, but we're almost done. So I'm gonna remove those two parentheses, do a comma, alt, enter to separate it. You don't have to do that, but I like it because it looks it's easier for me to understand organizationally. I'm gonna copy that if, paste it beneath. Now instead of reference A3, I'm gonna say if this comparison thing equals A4, and I want to get the average of stress if the date is the date, if the date in the data set is that date. But now I also want to get the average only if the position is this person's position. So I can do table daily position, and I'm going to do the colon position thing so that it's, it's locked in, because my plan is, just so you guys know, it's to drag this across. I could copy and paste it, which would be fine, but my plan is to drag it across. So now what is the position equal to? We have a couple of options here. Again, we can, well, actually we can't type that in. But what I would do is since we have this position as part of our profile data, which changes based on the person that we change, I'm gonna select this, D2, and lock it in. And now, I'm just gonna remove that comma and close it off and click enter. And if I change this to position, this value changes. This is the forward position average of stress for this day. If I change this person, I think Tweety Bird was a different position. Notice 4.857, change the Tweety Bird. Now the position average for guards was five. I wonder who's the center. Uh, sorry, I'm, I just wanna play. Stewie Griffin, let's let's try that, that fella. Um, we tried Stewie Griffin. Remember we have five for the guards. Well, it looks like the stress was higher, which is actually better for the centers. Right, but now we're able to compare Stewie to the team average for this date, for the position average for this date, and to his own average for the year. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, look for these crosshairs. Oh, I hope this works. This is the moment of truth. Oh, wait. I'm going to do if error. I always do it. So at the beginning, I'm going to say if error, open parenthesis, and then at the end of this whole thing, I'm going to do comma. Blank. So if there's an error, it's going to be blank. Click enter, and let's see what happens if I drag this across. That looks good. Now, if you didn't do those um, these double square brackets with a colon in between, you could just as easily. I'm just going to copy this down. You could easily copy it, paste it to the next cell. The difficulty is that when you do that, you're going to have to change, you know, stress here to sleep quality. You have to change stress here to sleep quality and change stress here to sleep quality. Click enter. And actually, while I'm on this, another way to switch things, let's say you didn't want to do that and you didn't want to drag it across. I like using find and replace a lot. So I'm going to copy this cell, paste it over. Right now it's showing the sleep quality, but if I select, let me just copy this first. I'm gonna copy sleep quality. I have the cell selected, I'm gonna go find, replace. I'm gonna replace sleep quality with energy. Now I'm gonna click replace all. Notice these, these the cell is highlighted. And now, in my formula, sleep quality switched to energy. And these are just examples of, of, of how to change things in different ways. I'm gonna remove this stuff. Now we have an interactive type of dashboard where we can compare to different, um, compare things in different ways based on what we select here when this does become a dropdown of sorts. And that's it for this video. Um, I hope it was helpful. And in the next one, we'll keep on building this out. Thanks for watching.